Hey, good morning, guys. Anthony, 4 before Diesel. Well, not such a good morning for uh, one Prado owner with a 1KD. It seems it's got a cracked piston, so we're going to show you what it's going to look like so you can see what the symptoms, um, so you've got a pretty good idea if it happens to you. And of course, then we'll recap what the general causes are and how you might be able to avoid that, which we've pretty well covered in a lot of our other videos, but we'll just do it again anyway. So we're going to go and uh, start the vehicle's engine. The engine is cold, and this is what the tailpipe will look like. Oil, okay. I'm just trying to let it clear a little bit so I can breathe here. <laughs> Okay, so if you see that, and we'll come on, we'll show you a, a view of the engine bay and some other little things. 99.9% .9 you've got a cracked piston, okay? So if you've got bad blow-by, you have to have, look, even blow-by, the worst blow, so if you've got one of those washers and it's got a whole quarter missing out of it, it's not going to do this. So if you see this, see how it's clearing up a little bit though, you know? The engine's just started, it is cold, it's just sort of... But you can see the tailpipe, you can see it chuffing, see that chuff, chuff, chuff. The key thing is, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and give it a little rev, just to show you how it, the, the smoke plumes up quite easily. Totally set up the wrong spot right here. Oh. Oh. Try a different angle, eh? Okay, so this one's pretty bad. They do vary, I suppose, on the size of the hole, the crack or the hole, because it starts off as a crack. It doesn't happen like a light switch. It doesn't just go from being perfect to bing, it's got a hole in the piston, right? Slowly over time, wrong combustion. Now, you can even see the oil on the ground, so this is gonna be another telltale sign. You can see the chuffs, you can see the blue. People call smoke gray and blue and white. There is different color smokes. This is more of a blue smoke. Well, I'll just call it oil smoke. So it's what burning oil looks like, basically. Uh, like that, it looks pretty white, so it can be a bit confusing. Another reason we do these videos to try and hopefully explain and show people what's what. You can see the oil on the ground, right? So there's quite a bit of oil in the intake. Um, in the intake, what I say? Oh, I say the wrong Anyway, put oil in the exhaust. Anyway, so let's go and have a look at the engine bay, eh? Okay, so before we get to the engine bay, I thought, well, Let's have a look what it looks like. You won't always get this, but in this case, we've got the engine light. Oh, there's a number of different codes you can get with this. We haven't looked at that yet. Um, obviously things aren't right, so there's a number of things that's gonna wreak havoc on the system and throw a couple of codes. We may have a look at those and uh, add it in later on this video. The vehicle is just, you can feel the roughness shaking. It's basically running on three cylinders. Let's go and have a look at the engine boat. Okay, so there it is. You can see the engine jumping around quite a bit. I'm not sure how it looks in the video, because sometimes the video smooths things out. Um, I would estimate the engine rocking side to side by a good 10 millimeters. If you look up towards the EGR valve, the top there. You 
can see it's kind of rocking quite a bit side to side. That's, I suppose, the highest point. So you're going to notice it the most. And believe it or not, it's still probably only, you know, 10 mil side to side, up and down a few millimetres as well. But you can see the difference to how the engine would normally be running. It's quite obvious, yeah? Funnily enough, recently we've made a few videos showing you what not to do. Don't worry about taking this oil cap off and that little pressure amount of blow by is normal. Now we're about to show you what's not normal. Okay, so just get it up a little bit. You're not going to be able to see a lot anyway, but hopefully you'll see something. see the difference the compression from that from what would be going making power and out the exhaust there's no seal there so it's blowing straight down through the piston at the bottom and that compression is blowing out the oil cap there right and that's why depending on the size of the hole and how you drive the vehicle running the engine like this can end up popping seals and doing other damage as well because you've got a high amount of um, blow by there right That's what it looks like if you've got a cracked piston, okay? That's your diagnosis. You don't really need to plug in. You don't need to strip it down. You don't need to do a compression test. That is a cracked piston. All right, so I thought we'll switch it off and then we can um, have a bit of an information discussion regarding what's happened here and what happens sometimes. Now, for, for many years now, uh, there's been a lot of these. There, look, there's heaps of these in Australia. Let's get that first, right? There, there's, there's millions of one KDs out there. In Australia, 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 there's, look, we think there's somewhere in the many hundreds of thousands, around the 600,000 mark, okay? Not sure about that. Could be more or less, probably more. But we'll try and be a little bit on the conservative side. <coughs> it's one of the most popular, most used four-wheel drives out there, the Toyota brand. When you travel the outback, that's generally what you see. Um, they are awesome vehicles, reliable, well-engineered. And until you add aftermarket accessories or the wrong people work on them, generally you don't have any issues. Now, as we've explained in other videos, you need to understand this is quite a small engine quite a small engine for the size of the vehicle okay it's a four cylinder this is a big four drive remember they used to be six cylinders they're still v8s and whatever you know but remember they used to all be six cylinders of v8s they never used to have four cylinders in them we'll never say never but generally they were all you know the four drives now obviously over the years the prados they started off the 90 was like a, a 95 was like a it was a, it was kind of a much smaller car where you could get away with it still had a 3.4 v6 three litre diesel now we've got bigger they're wider they're higher so you know more wind resistance at speed so they're working we want more power we want more economy and we've got that but the thing is you've still got the same cubic displacement three litre okay it's highly strong now so you're already it's it's on its limits so as soon as something's not right um, and it's, as I said before, it's well documented by Toyota about the injectors causing the wrong combustion caused by the injectors not working right is what cracks pistons, okay? Toyota's massive, mate. They trust their R&D. Don't worry what anybody else says, including me. Just look at the paperwork. It's in other videos. You can search around or whatever. It's, it's documented by Toyota. Now, the other thing we see, the big contributor is, even when injectors are okay, is chips and tunes okay those sorts of things now we're not really against you making race cars out of these if you want we're just trying to tell people the experiences we've seen and heard so that people can make informed decisions about what modifications they want to do in their vehicle and then i'll just touch on it the next question usually is is an exhaust okay well i think it's okay but the turbo specialist that's another specialist area the turbo specialist tells us that larger exhausts 
contribute or cause the turbo the overboost which is what causes the problems with these turbos so I'm not 100% sure it's specific to all turbos or just this one but I'm pretty sure we were talking about this engine and these turbos so as far as that respect goes you don't really want to uh, do that either I think the exhaust system is quite large for the size of the engine and the revs that it needs to make and you don't need it that being said of course I drive vehicles with exhaust systems and some of them feel like they're quite responsive especially down low including one I drove on the weekend so um, there's definitely um, some performance benefits there by changing to some exhaust systems um, and I think some are just rubbish and you wouldn't waste your money to wreck your Toyota now the cracked piston thing we've pretty well shown you the symptoms of what that is um, I've said for years the most common time it seems it's not just from our vehicle all the ones we follow up on a lot of them we do you know what you can call it R&D we do our own research to know as much as we can about these and it seems to be the most common time they crack pistons is from about 160 to about 210,000 k's now that's not to say it's not going to happen after there and as they get older it's probably more likely because how long were the injectors lift in for? You know, the fatigue's already started, if you know what I mean, by leaving them in too long. So we'll call it damage already done. Don't think of it like it's probably got a massive crack and it's about to pop, because usually it's not the case. It could be, okay, it could be. Um, there is probably some of those. Now, as I was saying, for years, we could say, you know, nobody we know sort of thing, any vehicles we service, work on, supplied, sold, fitted injectors for, whatever, um, has had a cracked piston but in the last six months that's changed we've had um, look I can engines at the moment over the last six months I can count about six cars and I'll just quickly run through those one was at nearly 400,000 k's and it had done a lot of low range work engine running all day so that that nearly 400 probably equates to six or seven hundred thousand at least because of the engine hours the runtime um, for the first 200,000 k's it did a lot of towing a caravan around Australia, okay, so it was worked hard It didn't get the injectors changed in the first 200,000, okay, so there's some possible damage already started um, You know, and then it's had a hard time after that traveling at speeds up north, you know Like with roof loaded wind resistance this sort of thing So the engines have been worked hard and it's kind of no surprise really when you have these engines at really much higher k's where they haven't had the injectors changed regularly um, but look th then there was another one with the injectors changed around about these k's 210 and then it's um, it's cracked at 250 so there's a couple of theories there so I just want to say with that other one that was nearly 400,000 k's fuel contamination was found on that so fuel contamination damaging the injectors all four injectors were out of spec um, the next one that was tested um, also came back contamination so possibly some damage was already done. Um, I'm not, I haven't seen the full report on that, whether the injectors got checked as well, because I suppose if the insurance doesn't ask for it, then it doesn't happen, it's a waste of time. So you'd assume that if the fuel was bad, the injectors were bad, but that's unknown. So there's a couple of factors here, possibly um, if they've been left in too long. We've seen that a few times. We've seen a number of vehicles, so be warned, we've seen a number of vehicles. The ones that go past, you know how I said the 160, 210 thing, the ones that end up closer to um, 250, 300 or, or 350, 400. So we've heard of engines going at uh, 380k um, was one that I can think of at, at high kilometres. Jeff, that's your car I'm talking about if you watch this video. The injectors, I, if I, I've got a pretty good memory. People go, geez, you remember stuff. Anyway, I reckon these first set of injectors were changed with who knows what by who knows where by who by, but at about 140,000 k's and they weren't changed again, it was at 380. So it's kind of no surprise there. That never got a fuel test anyway. So your two factors outside having chips and tunes and fresh injectors. So if you've got all that covered, you're pretty right. But the two factors that seem to be coming into play at the moment are either really high K vehicles that may not have had injectors changed often enough. Um, and so when I say six vehicles, so that's one, two, We've got another one unknown at the moment that's parked we're yet to investigate that one um, there's another one that it was a bog hole right so it wasn't real it's not a I don't think it's a crack I don't know what it is really I haven't seen it but there was muddy water in the intake in the bottom of the airbox right from sort of hitting a bog hole that wasn't supposedly that deep but going fast enough to make it through 
there's a snorkel in place, but perhaps it wasn't sealed because there was muddy water in the airbox. So we're suspicious that the speed has pushed the muddy, muddy water up above that plastic liner around the right hand front wheel. And once it goes above it and you're giving it to it at full revs, it's gonna suck it in. And there's the airbox right there, probably open that plastic's probably fallen off or something. Because like some people say, oh, you gotta use heaps of silicon. Well, silicon, it's, while it's wet, it's like a lubricant. So as you tighten that clamp down, things slip off anyway. So be aware of that. I suggest you use it dry. We don't, I've said this in other videos, you don't use silicon on radiator hoses. Okay, and that's a pressure situation. The air intake isn't a pressure situation. You certainly do not need any silicon. You need to make sure all the hoses and connections are on properly. It's a bit awkward than that. That's why it's time consuming to do it right. That's why perhaps you can get a snorkel fitted cheap somewhere because they're just not taking the time to make sure it's right. And this is what it can result in. So one of those six is water ingress. So we're not sure happening, what's happening with that one. Should be insurance. We like to help people out with these engines and give them the right advice and which way to go. So if you've done the right thing and you've you know got the right injectors and got the right installation whether it's purchasing from me my installation or our recommended repairers or you've done it yourself from our videos that's the first step um, once you're in the vip group after your purchase you've got you're available to join into that crack piston fund we've got a little fund there with a few people that chuck some money in and there's more details of that in the VIP group it's not insurance you know we slangly call it insurance or warranty call it whatever you like but at the end of the day it's just an account we've got set up there it's holding the money we've got a few guidelines on what we're going to pay for it's designed for this sort of damage okay crack piston now if it's contamination then it's insurance so there's a bit of detail to that some people are thinking yeah no maybe I don't really care what you think it doesn't matter I know what I'm doing and what I'm talking about so if you're part of our network of clients or customers or repairers whatever then this is the information that's available okay so it is quite often accidental damage and it's insurance and if it's not that's what we've got the crack piston fund for unfortunately this one hadn't had the injectors done okay it was the first time we saw this was a 200,000 k service obviously it left a lot cleaner than what it is at the moment and we haven't seen it since it's on 220 now so you know perhaps that's a factor this is what I'm talking about maintenance I'm not sure I'm told it had an oil change that's good that's the main thing I suppose um, 200 was a pretty major service and I'll be pretty happy to say I don't need to set for a fair while but as long as those filters and that have been done and the oil sort of thing so um, but I did put the part of the report was injectors overdue injectors you know they're, they're due now need to be done sort of thing which another 20k past that 210 thing Look, you can be lucky and it could have made it to 300,000. You could be unlucky and it pops at 170. This is why we recommend seven years 170, okay? Now this one, if I remember correctly, I'm just gonna go and check to be, let's not remember and be right wrong. Let's have a look. So this is a February 2011 build, okay? It's nearly 10 years old. Now we don't know if someone's had these injectors out. Um, and put, bent the pipes back and contamination to the injectors. So that's one possible issue at some point. Whoops. And um, I'm just having a look around while I'm speaking. Perhaps maybe they've been out. There's some marks on the pipes. So this is the thing. People always, you know, oh, why is this, you know? Well, if you've got people pulling pipes back and bending pipes back and contamination to the injectors, then you're going to have problems with the injectors, aren't you? You know? So, well, not always. You could be lucky. There's luck involved, right? So it depends whether you want to roll with luck or not. I want to make sure it's all sealed up and clean. These seats, they're not going to last forever. We know, we've already talked in other videos about how long the ejector seats last, so watch those if you want to know about that. Just Google, search on our channel what you want to know about injectors, how, injector life, what, injector wear, injector seats, blow by, whatever. You search these things on our channel and the videos that you want to know about to learn about these will come up. And obviously moving on to information on other vehicles and uh, other engines also so I don't know I hope you get the picture um, we just want to avoid all this there's been we were going through a run I suppose in the last couple of years where years ago you heard of more crack pistons and there's a lot less because people are onto it they're replacing their injectors they're avoiding the chips and stuff like that well not everybody is and those people that go ah oh, shit be right mate you know no problem whatever when it all goes pear shaped they're quiet you don't hear from them okay so <coughs> I'm here to tell you how it is, you know, how it works. That's what I'll tell you how it is. Some people don't like it, but it's just how it is, okay? So, I don't know what else I can tell you. Um, 
you know, we went through that period of it was all good. We seem to have a bit of a bad one. I mean, six cars in six months isn't bad. And I suppose I've got a bit of a reputation. So if it happens, I do hear about it, if you know what I mean. So, but until now, there hasn't been many of vehicles that we've worked on, serviced or supplied injectors. And there has been a few lately. So um, be completely honest, there's what, there's over the last, of injectors that were replaced in the last three years, let's say, I suppose all these vehicles are getting high in case. What's the lowest kilometre one uh, that I can think of? Probably this one, okay, so 220. The others are, as I said, nearly 400, over 300, uh, nearly 400, and another one was 250, and there's another one, I can't remember the case, but I'm pretty sure the injectors were first done at about 250 or so, and um, yeah, it had about 300, there was 310, 320, somewhere there. So. It's all as they get to higher case. So some people are sort of going into a panic and thinking, do I sell it, whatever? Well, that's one way you can go, or you can make sure you've done everything right and be in the crack piston fund, okay? And the idea then is, if it happens to someone, then we've got the funds there to pay for it. Now, the le there's two ways to look at that fund. The less people are in there, the better, because there's less chance someone's gonna make a claim and deplete the funds. It can only pay if the funds are there, right? That's one of the conditions. Okay, the more people are there, the more money we've got, the more we can cover. So at the moment, as I've said, we started off at a really cheap price to get some interest. The target is it's going to be $500, okay? 500 bucks covers you for up to five years. That's not 500 a year. We're talking about $100 a year up front, $500. So it's probably still too cheap. You've got insurance that costs probably over $1,000 a year that you're probably not going to use most of the time, except for maybe with this, so you definitely need that. You should have RAC. This is another thing. You need to have your RAC total or ultimate care the top cover if you're traveling more than 100 k's from home I've, I've said this before this is for the guys in australia everybody else you probably got similar things maybe but i'm not sure um this one he didn't have that so it just cost him a few hundred bucks last night for not ha so more than it would have cost him and just i suppose the inconvenience as well you get other benefits with that cover like you know higher cars taxis accommodation you know so it is a good thing so plug for rec whatever Whatever, I'll just tell you what works. I don't really care, you know what I mean? Same as the injectors, you can do them or not. If you want to be the guinea pig that runs it off and see what happens, you can do that, that's fine, no problem. Um, but if you want reliability and you're doing big trips, I believe the one KD is an awesome engine still, but you just need to make sure the, the maintenance has been done right, and that includes the injectors being replaced, okay? So it's not in the book at any part, time, here it is, you need to replace them. It's a wear and tear item that can cause big problems with your engine big bill and a big inconvenience so i don't know what else i can tell you it's kind of a butter bing butter boom don't worry about all the oil splat everywhere this thing's going to probably have a new engine anyway one way or the other i'd assume but not might be wrong if you haven't already hit the subscribe turn the bell on so you don't miss out on these important messages if I think of anything else or any other updates with this, I'll be sure to either put them up here or remember we've got our other groups on Facebook. I know a lot of you aren't on Facebook or whatever, and if you're overseas, you may not be able to access a couple of our pages. One of them is the Prado Hospital. That's more about to do with servicing and stuff and to help people, you know, the DIYs and um, doing your own servicing sort of thing. Um, at the Prado Hospital, a bit of information what we're doing there. And then we've got 1K FT. One, the engine, 1KD FTV, injectors, I think it's called, yeah, I don't even know what the page is, I wonder if injectors, something like that anyway, it's another page we've got, anyway, if you look in our videos, I'll show you on that page, so, because it's, I just can't remember, you know, anyway, and of course, in Australia, we've got our main groups, Oz Prado crew and Oz Hilux crew, um, that we'll post, we may just, if there's little updates, we may, just, this one, this one's a Prado, so we're going to post it in the Prado group, but we've also got, Hashtag 1KD Forever Crew. That may get some information about this. I'll possibly even drop the link, this video link, into those groups as a sort of thing I do. So if you miss the notification, these are the sort of places you'll get it. So hashtag 1KD Forever Crew. We've also got the engine group. What's it called? 1KD FTV Injectors and Engine. Okay, is the group. And even if you're those two groups, even if you're overseas, doesn't matter where you are. As long as you answer the three questions, you must answer those questions to get into the group. The admins won't let you in unless those questions are answered. Um, so nice, clear three questions answered would be awesome. Just trying to share the info, guys. Um, we're still talking very small percentages here, but at the moment we've had a bit of a spurt. So if I was you, 
and I'd replace my injectors with my gear, whatever, I'd be making sure I'm in that fund. And I'm saying that because we want to get the funds up a bit as well. For the rest of February, it's still 350, okay? So it's kind of like, it's on special until it hits 500. And I can't guarantee it won't go higher than that. It all depends on the balance when it hits 500. Depends on any claims we've had sort of thing, you know? And if we get a big amount of money there, then we'll spend that on other things like turbos, whatever. But that isn't happening so far. Um, it's not like we're going to have, you know, 100 grand there, whatever. So you must have ticked the boxes with the right new fresh injectors, pipes and everything and the job done right. So that means either with me, one of our recommended repairers, or you were going to do it yourself. So you've got the kit and you've watched the videos again and again and made sure that you're doing it right and it's done right. And you've pretty much ticked the boxes pay your money it's a separate account it's not my business thing it's just i'm kind of like i think like an administrator someone's got to sort of manage it whatever so it's nothing to do with my business there's no profit there's no there's no like you know commissions or i don't know it's not an interest account well, i probably should put in an interest account we can make some more money anyway but not the interest rates are much anyway guys if it was me i'd make sure i was in there and if i hadn't replaced my injectors i'd be getting onto it asap um, because wrong combustion guys at the end of the day could have been I believe this could have been prevented with um, you know say the injectors were done back around 170 we've upgraded to DLCs from non DLCs they just wear much better it's so much better it's kind of a no-brainer I like you know it's a no-brainer mate upgrade they're old you know I think but I just want to explain while I'm saying that I don't want people replacing injectors unnecessarily either and we had a couple of, I said mentioned in a video recently <clears throat> last week one day I had two people contact me both with about 60,000 Ks one was a 14 one was a 15 and I'm sort of like listening to videos they're sending me but I can't hear much I'm really saying please post it if you've got questions please post them if you've got simple questions first search the channel search the pages search the groups the answers are there if they're not there post ask the question there's other people there that know the answers right we've got to spread the workload there's only one of me and that's the way it's staying i'll do what i can my time really needs to reserve for stuff that's not that that is the harder stuff and then i suppose once it gets that hard sometimes it's hard to remotely diagnose but i suppose maybe i'm the encyclopedia on this a lot of people come to me when they do have bigger problems and i'm quite often can help but quite often i can't help as well okay so but when we get to the bottom of it together or whatever the case may be it's good if you provide the feedback back to me so then when i see the same thing again i can say hey that's that you know what i mean encyclopedia anth so anyway <laughs> it's it's all up there and i'm trying to share it in the videos i can't obviously put a hole that ecu up there above the uh between the ears into videos but i'm doing the best i can thanks for watching i hope that's given you some info something to think about um we don't want people with okay so if you've got a Obviously the one GDs at the moment, they're fairly new. Even if they don't hire Ks, they've done them quick. So that's a, that's a good thing. <coughs> um, so mainly back at one KDs. 15s I'm not worried about. 14s I'm not worried about. 13s I'm not really worried about. But if it's done high Ks, so on a 2013, I'm kind of saying, well, they're seven years old, but if they've done under 100,000, under 150, I'm not too worried, right? So. With the DLCs, I'm more happy to go more towards the kilometre thing and extend the time a bit, maybe nine years. So 2013, technically, it's kind of got to nine years. So it depends on the case, you know what I mean? You have to hit me with... That's where I... Feel free to text me on those sorts of things, right? If you're in Australia and you're thinking about buying an injector kit or getting the, book it in to get your injectors replaced, whatever, or sussing out one of our recommended repairers, text me your name. Always text me your full name, please, so I can store it. I do names, not numbers. Numbers are too hard. It's messy. Please text me your name, your vehicle, year, and kilometres are the next important one. Prado or Hilux, the year of it, and the kilometres it's done. And then ask me a question. Keep it short, please, if you can. And I'll hopefully have an answer for you. I'll either text you back or I'll call you to discuss it a bit further and try and explain what I mean, but it varies. And it all depends if you think those injectors have been removed because... If those pops have been removed and bent back and dirt and contamination, we've shown you in other videos all the stuff that can fall into the injectors and I think it'd be rare that that didn't happen. Because um, people work on the vehicles, this is clean. Well, it's not that clean, but this is clean compared to a lot of them. And if you have a look at your injector pipes and the, and the nozzle seals there over that side of the engine, you can see the fuel pipes, you know, and the clamps. All the stuff that falls in there 
it's very difficult to get those pipes out without having that fall in your injectors, which is why I just say it goes hand in hand. It's time to replace the seats, it's time to replace the injectors. So if you've got, a, I suppose, a 2013, it's probably coming due soon. If it's like, if it's done 200,000 Ks, do it. If it's done 170, do it. If it's done 130, it's done 130, do it soon. You know, sooner rather than later. And the other symptoms, more than diagnostics, in my opinion, okay, some people rely on diagnostics. I don't rely on diagnostics on these. I'll do it to make sure there's nothing bad coming up, but it's unlikely you're gonna see anything on the 09 onwards, 150 Prado and similar vintage Hilux. It's rare that you're gonna see much on diagnostics before it's too late, right? And think something really bad's gone down and probably already done some damage. When we replace injector, we strip down the old ones, you get a free contamination check and we get to see the wear with our eyes. We're not talking microscope, we're just talking with our eyes what we can see. And if we can see it with our eyes, it's bad and that's what we see, so. The seats need to be done, the injectors need to be done. Bada bing, bada boom, I'm out of here. Keep your right for updates. Thanks for watching. See ya.